and we have um, Steph Stearp, who's going to give his uh, <coughs> his views on integration, uh, integrated care, the policy development, service development in Flanders, and also just how they've uh, used um, the Shiroko tool there to help their deliberations. So thank you very much, Steph. Morning. How to implement change? Basically, I don't know. I don't know nothing about Ale. Until one year and a half ago, I didn't know anything about primary care systems. The only thing I knew about primary care was the address of my own general practitioner. But I was an expert. I am an expert in in guiding uh, complex societal change processes. And since the Flemish government decided to reform the primary care system in Flanders. And uh, they took, and I will tell something about it, they already took huge steps forward since 2011. But one year and a half ago, they really said, OK, we will start really all the ambitions uh, we have there. And we will start, what did I do? I opened up something. Have you broken it? No, 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 no. Um, so one year and a half ago, in, in June uh, 2017, I started my mission uh, for the, yeah, the reorganization of the Flemish primary uh, care system. Uh, and I will tell you some of the difficulties and, uh, and the complexities I faced in doing that process, and I still face today because it's, it's a three years project. Um, before we start, maybe it's good to, to, to tell something about, I don't know if you know, but, but Belgium as such is already a complex country, and that complexity is really inhibited also in the, in the, in the health system, eh? because we have a, a lot of competencies on a, on a federal level, eh? like the reimbursement uh, of, the, of the medical uh, acts and pr procedures, like regulation and financings of, of, of insurance, hospitals, etc., like, and that's, that's, that's very difficult, uh, the, the law on professional qualification, etc., etc., and then there are a lot of competencies on the, on the regional level, eh, for, for, for uh, the, the, as well the Flemish-speaking region as the, as the French-speaking re region, like elderly care, long-term mental health care, compulsory care insurance, disease prevention, etc., uh, etc., et care at home, and all these things that are very important as well uh, in the primary care uh, system, of course. And as everywhere, no, maybe not as everywhere in Europe, because Belgium really has a, a, has a health system that is quite liberal. So our health system is driven by uh, basically private initiative, as well in the, as well in the primary care uh, system as also in the hospital. So we have a large therapeutical, therapeutical freedom for physicians, and we have a large uh, freedom of choice also for uh, patients. And of course, this is quite the system is quite challenging the new needs and, 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 and the new problems we face with uh, chronic diseases and things like that. Um, as I said, it's in the primary care system. It's also in the, in the, in the hospitals where we have also <coughs> quite some, some private initiative, mostly from, from, from Catholic origin. We have in elderly care, we do have a uh, public initiative, uh, mostly from local authorities. And there we have some market-driven initiatives as well. Um, in 2012, and, and basically even somewhat uh, before that, uh, the, the, the different Belgian ministers responsible for health care uh, had a common reflection or initiated a common reflection on the organization of integrated care. And then a whole process started on changing the health system, as well on federal level as on the regional uh, level. And sometimes I have to admit the different in initiatives at the different levels in, in our country, they are basically, when I look at it, very contraproductive. That's, that, that's a difficulty we have to face. I will now focus on, 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 on what we do in Flanders. Eh? We had, uh, during the last couple of years, we had uh, three big primary care uh, uh, 
um, conferences, which the most important because the ambitions were already laid down in 2010, and then gradually, and the, the most uh, recent conference uh, came up with a very ambitious plan, mainly the reorganization of the primary care system, and was a long process of, of uh, preparatory workshops, and then the conference took, took place in the 16th February of 2017, and what resulted from that conference was really a, a vision text, uh, a policy vision text on the reorganization of the primary care system uh, in Flanders. And the main elements are basically, basically I can skip the next slides because everything was, that was just presented by the, by the former speaker uh, was in that vision text, was in that policy vision text of the, of, 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 of the, 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 the different actors that were, um, that were involved in, in, in the conference. So the main idea was to implement the World Health Organization model of integrated care. So where the person would be really in the middle of, of, of the care process, where uh, the, the inter integral approach was, was essential for what we want to uh, when, what we want to reach. Uh, so we want to work with care plans, we want to work with more care in the neighborhood, we want to work with, with uh, uh, a, a lot of information put, uh, points in the neighborhood of the patient. We want to, to work on an integration of prevention, mental health care, family care, care at home, social policy, etc., etc. So it was quite an ambitious plan eh? and basic idea that was really in the middle of the whole uh, reorganization is that we should end up with a system where there is really a, a group of caretakers that is that is centered around the patient, where the patient has is is the, is the director of its own care process, and where you where you appoint a, 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 what we call a zorg coordinator, so a coordinator of care to 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 regulate to to direct the whole care process. And basically, the ideal, of course, in the ideal situation, the patient itself is his own director of care. In complex cases, we opt for a case manager. So when there is really, really a complex need or when the, the, the care process at such, so when the work between the, 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 the team of caretakers doesn't go well, a case manager can be uh, uh, called to, to support the care team. So that, that was what we want to do on the floor, what you want to get. And to do that, you need a whole reorganization of your change process. And what we want to do, if you look at structural changes in Flanders, we want to implement basically three levels of structures on the, on the, on the, on the ground floor, as I can say. So really on the, on the, local, uh, on the local level, we are busy doing uh, or, or implementing primary care zones where the whole integration of care, so well, all actors of care, welfare, healthcare, hospitals, so social care, uh, you name it, uh, are really working together to support all the care processes in their region. On a, on a more regional level, we, we want to, to implement uh, what we call regional platforms where the more specialized uh, care uh, types like uh, dementia, like uh, uh, how you call that in English, uh, the care for uh, people who are going to die, so uh, pal pal palliative, okay, I didn't know the word in English. So where all these things, and also very important on that regional level is the, is the, is the link you make between your primary care system and your more specialized, your hospital system and things like that. And also at that level, all these actors, what you want to do is really that they work together, that they organize their processes, that they support all professionals in, uh, in their region, etc. And then on the Flemish level, and I'm happy to say that we I hope tomorrow that we will have a, a, a commitment, an agreement on, 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 on the creation of an institute for primary care in Flanders, and that we will, uh, will set up, will be set up uh, beginning next year, and here really the, that it will be a competence center to support uh, the whole care sector in Flanders. That was the idea. So that was, was a big action plan, 100 pages thick. And what they looked at, and that's where I came in, uh, they, they looked for a program manager to translate all these ambitions into, into a real action plan uh, to prepare legislation. Uh, we are now 
and, and I think that the Flemish government in a few weeks will, will have a second debate on the new decreed on primary care in Flanders. Uh, so we're busy, busy preparing this legislation. We have to do a very, very severe reallocation of personal and resources. Uh, very important in the whole reformation program is that, that, that uh, the, the ownership of everything you, that you do, the ownership lies really with the actors and what you have to do. And uh, I, I love the, the slide on, on, or, or the saying on, on, on working between sectors. We are very busy doing projects with the welfare sector, with the healthcare sector, with the educational system on how they, can they cooperate to make all these changes come true. So what I did was I made a transition program. I translated all the ambitions of the action plan in, in total, 13 projects. And basically, we had three axes in that program. There was really an X on, 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 on the content. Uh, so, 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 and the content for me, that then was then really that, that care process that you, that you try to develop uh, around the patients. We had, of course, some project that has to deal with the structural changes. And we had to facilitate, we had to, to, to create also the necessary instruments to make all that changes come through. And uh, it, it, as, as you all know very well, the basic instrument to, to, to deliver all this care is that you have a very good e-health uh, system, uh, which is, I have to say, quite a challenge, certainly in Belgium, where all actors want to develop their own e-health system. Uh, so, and this, this, and, and I'm sorry it's in Dutch, I, I, I took this slide from another presentation, but as you can see, there is quite a balance between those three axes. So we work at the same time parallel on structural changes, content-wise changes, and on instruments that need to be developed to make all these changes come true. And then I was asked, because I don't know nothing of the Sirocco model. I don't know the tool, I, and so, but I, I, I looked a bit into it, and this was a picture that was made from my colleagues, from the team of primary care at the Ministry of, of at the Agency of Care in, in Flanders. And after the conference in February 2017, they made uh, this assessment within the Sirocco tool of the primary care system in Flanders. And I took this picture, and again, I don't know nothing about what is behind it, but I can, I can, of course, I can read the axis. And if you allow me to, 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 to place some comments, because right after the conference in February 2017, there was, there was, you know, there was a big feeling of, yes, we can do this. We can make this change work. So, for instance, the readiness to change was very high. If I look now, and, and, and one of the, 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 the questions was on the, on the, on the conservat conservatism of, of, of practitioners, um, I have to say I don't know if I would, um, if I would uh, judge the readiness to change at this moment so high, because you know, once you start implementing things, change, it's really a question of dialoguing, 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 over and over again to make that change work because when 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 things really come to change their habits to change their 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 normal procedures you notice that in real life change is not that easy but we we go we're doing it eh? at this moment we do have our primary care zones we will have the flemish institute uh, for primary care we we are creating re, we are really creating we took an important decision earlier this week we are really creating a new e-health system eh, uh, uh, what we call a digital care platform uh, so we are we are making the change work but it goes very very slowly so if you look at information and e-health services, services, which was quite judged quite high, basically, if I look at it and I compare it also to other sectors are working, I think, whoa, this is, this is judged quite, quite high. I would say, hmm, hmm, somewhat, somewhat less high. If you look at um, population approach, there I think we are really doing some work. We are now pulling together all the data, we are working together with different actors to really make a population approach work. 
And therefore, these primary care zones that we are creating right now are very important because within these zones, and I think it was a very wise decision to make these zones on a level of like 100,000 people living in the zones from 80,000 to uh, 120,000. And we are really uh, noticing now in the work that is being done in these zones that the different actors are really taking into account the characteristic characteristics of of the population, and that is, think, is I think, a very good uh, thing. Let me take a very last one because I have to stop. Uh, and I would uh, citizen empowerment. Um, for one of the projects uh, I added, I have to say, in 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 the change program because it it surprised me quite a lot, and and. I want to stop with that. It was it was a reflection I made in reading the policy paper that came out of the conference. It was a policy paper that, on the second page, the World Health Organization uh, model was placed central. And it was said what we, our ambition is to make this work. And then you had like 80 pages of actions and things that should be put in place. And I think there was half a page about empowering the citizens, empowering the patient, etc. And so I, I, I made up a project that really wants to do that. If you want a, a healthcare system where the patient is put central, you don't have to work not solely with the patient. We do that as well. We, we work with the patient representatives and we, 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 we support them in taking up their positions in all these structures, etc., etc. But you need to work with the citizens as well because the citizen even if he's not in a position of needing care, needs to know, needs to have the competences that once he will become a patient, and surely a chronic patient, he needs to have the competences to be the director of his own care process. And if you want to do that, you need to work on that before he becomes a patient, and that's very important. And we are now doing different projects, and it's not only about health literacy, yeah, but health literacy is something about staying healthy. You also, I call it care literacy. You have to be able to work with the care system, and these demands, this demands competences and capacities that 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 that, that are different from purely health literacy uh, capacities. I will stop with this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Steph. Um, I mean, for me, I think this was the example, the real life example of how a region who actually hasn't been a partner in Chiroko, it's a region, one of the many regions that have used the tool and tested it at a local level to give you a, a kind of current state of play, I suppose, around what the perception of integrated mm. care implementation is. So very, very interesting insight, and you'll hear quite a number of those throughout today. But any questions for Steph before he goes? Because he does have to I have to be us. at 11 o'clock at the agency. Yes. You've got time just for a couple? Yes, so yes, we've got one just here, this lady just no, here. No, I have time. Our ladies, we'll I still have time. We'll just come with the no mic, problem. if you can hold on. Just let us know um, what your name is and your organization. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for this uh, inspiring uh, lecture. Uh, I'm Maureen Rutten from Erasmus University of Rotterdam, and I'm the coordinator of the SELFIE project on integrated care for people with multiple mobilities. And I was especially intrigued by your last remarks about uh, care literacy and empowering patients before they become patients, empowering citizens. What do you actually do to achieve this before people become ill? So what are the concrete actions that you're taking? What, what we are doing right now in the project, we work together with the funds, Daniel de Koning, which is quite a big funds of the King Baldwin Foundation here in Belgium. And, and what, we, what they just finished is an interna international research study on projects that work on that care literacy, what we call care literacy, so, so, so building up competences with citizens in neighborhoods to deal with the care system. And we are... The, the, the project is finished now, so we will present uh, the report in, in two weeks. And what we will do, building on that results, is we will try to implement projects, and we will do a call that we will launch in the 24th of November. We will do a call for projects in Flanders to, to, to gain uh, insights and practices, good practices, in how can you 
build on a local level, how can you work on building competences with citizens uh, in this area? And once we will have the lessons from this project, we will, we will, we will develop um, uh, f formation, uh, how do you call that, uh, uh, a training uh, to, to bring that all over Flanders. So that's what we're doing right now. Okay, so you're in a stage that you're still trying to implement projects yeah, to yeah, empower the yeah, citizens. Yeah, okay. yeah. Thank you very much. We have one question here from Anna. Anna, if you can just say who you are. Yes. Hello, good morning. My name is Anna Carriaza from the Regional Ministry of Health in Andalusia. Thank you very much for the very, very interesting uh, example of how the real life mm -hmm. is <laughs> outside uh, the political commitment. I have three points that I would like to raise and, and expecting your comments on the political leadership and how is this kept through time, uh, the, how long does it take for the regulatory changes and uh, the new decree laws or whatever you implement here, and also how to cope with the resistance of the professionals working at, in, in the field? Um, thank you. Just some of it. What was uh, the first one the, again? The political leadership. I think, and that's, that's, I think, is really an advantage in, in, in Flanders, that, that we do have that political leadership. So I'm, I'm, I have a quarter of the time of the minister each week, and, 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 and I see him every week, and, and, and he is the head of the, of the steering committee that is driving this whole, whole process, and he's very engaged in making this work. And, and for instance, for me, that political leadership is all also translated in when I need him, to come to whatever a meeting or, or I don't know, he is there and he will be there and he, he, he takes his responsibility. How to deal with the resistance with uh, the care practitioners, uh, it's more than the care practitioners because the resistance is everywhere. Um, basically, the good thing about the conference we had in February 2017 is that all actors said yes, and, and it's probably something you had at the same level at the, at the World Summit. Everybody is saying, yes, we want this. This is what we want. Of course, nobody is realizing what it, what it takes to, to come there. But you do have that engagement. You do have that engagement around the ambition. And starting from that engagement, my way to deal with the resistance is always to put that common uh, stake back at the table. People, we said that we do want this. I know that it's difficult to change this and this and this, and that, will that it has an effect on your own short-term short stakes, but in the long run, we all want to, 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 to have this. So you have a common stake that you each time, each time can place back at the table to discuss the, 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 the difficulties and, and, uh, and uh, the, the troubles you face in, in doing that change. And for me, doing complex societal changes, it's basically it's always keep the dialogue open. Always keep on talking to people. Great. Thank you very much, Steph. Thank you very much for your time today, all three of our My speakers. Pleasure.